Uh, Velveeta. Liquid gold. Velveeta. <laughs> I need that cheese. Liquid gold! Um, cheese. All right. So, so you didn't click on this video to watch us talk, talk about, about boobs. Beer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today we have two kegs that we bought used. They used to be used for soda uh, syrup or I think pop syrup. old Coke kegs. Yeah, they're like old and they're, they're, they're like old. Um, they're, they're like old. Ballock kegs, yeah, yes. two Ballock kegs. Mm -hmm. And we have a rebuild kit so we can use them for homebrew here the next time we brew beer. So we don't have to model anymore. Yeah. So I'm, I'm we're gonna take you step by step <laughs> on how we're gonna get these kegs all nice and cleaned up for homebrew day. Things needed for changing out the O-rings on your Cornelius keg will be A, the uh, O-ring set itself, which will be linked in the description below, either a socket set or crescent set to loosen up the uh, ball locks on them, the paper towels and things in case get, things get messy, and possibly some needle nose pliers to get the O-rings off of a few of the parts. These help. The other part of this, hey Eric. The, <laughs> the other part of this are the kegs. So we're gonna throw one of these up here. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, jeez. Here we go. Thank you, cameraman. Keg. Ding. Oh man, this thing is dusty. Yep. So. Woo. All right. Now that the outside of the keg is clean. Um, we're going to go ahead and start dissembling the three main components. Okay, so uh, to start off, you want to make sure that your pressure is released and relieved of the keg. So you should have a pressure relief valve here with a little polling guy, which should be spring loaded shouldn't move up and down fairly easily. You can turn it and it'll hold it in place if you want to relieve pressure for a good amount of time. Um, pressure's all out of here. There's no nothing left in here, so we can go ahead and pop the top. And then that leaves us with that piece with the pressure relief valve on it. And now we have two, we have our gas inlet, the inside and our outside which goes down to the dip tube all the way down to the inside of the keg to get these loose. Um, ours have been sitting for a while and they were a little difficult to get loose. So just FYI, if you're coming from soda to rebuild it, it's a little sticky. And here is your dip tube. This is where your beer will come out of. We'll give that guy a good clean cleaning. And our gas line, our inlet, right here, which is just a little guy, also has an O-ring on it. And then that is it for the keg. So we're gonna go ahead and rinse the inside of this out, get it all cleaned up, get all the old seven up out of it and we're gonna rebuild our other pieces that we just took off. So now that we have all of our parts laid out nicely, and we have our O-rings, our new O-rings, we're just gonna go ahead and start replacing them one by one. We'll start with the biggest one, probably the easiest one. That's this one. And nothing more than just putting a new one on and taking the old one off. Start with the dip tube. Got a little black one on here. The black one. Now that one's on there. And we have the gas 
inlet, which is the same O-ring as the dip tube. And actually, you can tell, I don't, you, I don't know if you want to get a close-up of this, but you can tell the difference between these two and how much one is smashed compared to the other. That's the new one, and that's the old one. It's just flattened on the top like a pancake, whereas the new one's still round. It's always good to inspect your O-rings before actually kegging. So we'll put the new one on on the gas inlet, like so. Now added to our instruction part list, or tools needed, needle nose pliers. And what we're gonna do, can you see that? We're just gonna go ahead and smash the old one a little bit and kind of grab onto it and rip it right off. New one. Slide it right on in. Same thing with the orange one here. Grab it. <laughs> rip it off. Just like so. So now that all the O-rings are replaced, we can, thanks cameraman, we can uh, reassemble our keg. Yeah, let's do it. Keg, new valves, and all of its parts. Put it all back together. Stick it in those holes. Yes! Um, so we're gonna go ahead and put our home brewer door in. And seat it nicely. Just like that. And then we gotta look for the in and out side. So we're on the outside, that'll be the dip tube side. The dip tube's gonna go in. Ooh, this is difficult. And then out, we're gonna use the green uh, O-ring and the out with the dip tube inserted. You just kind of finger tighten that for now. And then we got our little gas inlet and our gas O-ring ball lock connector. We're gonna finger tighten that for now. Yeah. We're gonna take our crescent wrenches and give them a good little tighten. So let me go let me go get the crescent wrench. Get Popeye tight. Exit stage right. Stage left. Yep, I know how to use a crescent wrench. This is probably really boring watching me try to tighten this. And we should be all set to go and we'll make sure to test it before we do our home brew and throw it in here. So the second keg that we had uh, given to us or we bought used uh, had a different kind of connector on the bottom here. It's got more of like a star pattern, almost like a 16 or 18 point. Um, and they do make a special socket for that. Uh, so if you have one of those, you will need to purchase the socket. We'll put a link in the description below. All right, so that concludes our kegging O-ring change out video as cameraman is getting the key. Oh, my bad. That's okay. So that's a quick tutorial on how to change out the O-rings on a keg. Uh, make sure to, to do a pressurization and maybe sanitization check before you actually start putting beer in it. Make sure everything's tight and snug and your O-rings are correctly seated. Um, other than that, that's been Eric Between Two Kegs. Leave a comment below if you have any questions, like this video, subscribe to our page for more homebrew content. Cheers, guys. Mmm. Tasty. Did you zoom in on my face?